Number three, <laughs> not only ears that itch, not only ears that are dull of hearing. Thirdly, and hopefully this is where we are this morning, ears that understand. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 10. <coughs> Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. We're actually going to comment on this verse this coming Wednesday night when we deal with God's relationship to Israel. Should all be there for that. Verse 17. Verse you all know. So then faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. <coughs> Amen. And then Matthew 13, 9, you don't need to turn there. You know what it says. He that hath an ear, let him hear. I want to read a few verses to you. You don't need to turn there. I just want to read them and let them sink in. Psalms 40, verse number 6. Again, don't turn there. I want you to just listen and allow them to sink in. Psalms 40, verse 6 says this. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Mine ears hast thou opened. You know who's got to open those dull, itching ears? God. Proverbs 18, again, just listen closely. Proverbs 18, verse number 15 says this. The heart of the prudent gets knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. The heart of the prudent gets knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Notice again how the heart and the ear are intertwined. And then I'm going to read Matthew 11, verse 15 to you. Just listen closely. Matthew 11, verse 15 says this. He that hath ears to hear, I'll let him hear. If you will, these are ears that are being described here that have received God's Word, counted the cost, and then wholeheartedly follows the Lord. These are ears that receive rebuke joyfully. Amen. These are ears that receive tribulation joyfully. Amen. I'm not quite there yet, but that's what it says. <laughs> These are ears that have considered and have counted the cost in following the Lord as a Christian. And yes, there is a cost. I'm not talking about monetary here. I'm talking about the cost to you and to your family for standing up for truth and God. Yeah. There is a cost. Many of you have already been through that and know whereof I speak. There is a cost. There's a cost to follow the devil too. And there's a cost to follow the Lord. In Matthew 13 verse 8, I'm going to read this to you. He says, But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And then he says in verse 23, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that hears the word, understands it, then bears fruit. There's a threefold process there. A threefold process. Number one, you hear the word, you understand the word, and then you bear fruit through the Word. Amen. That's what God wants. I mean, it's like right there. It's like a three-point sermon because God does everything in three points. <laughs> My question to you this, uh, this morning is, how is your hearing? What kind of ears best characterize you this morning? I'll bet there's some people in here who have some itching ears every once in a while. You want to come in here and hear something that kind of strokes you. Wrong church, buddy. Maybe some of you want to come in and you say, well, I want to hear, but I really don't want any depth. I don't want any substance. Well, I guess sometimes my preaching can have no depth and no substance, but 
for the most part, we try to make sure there's some milk and some meat. Amen? Amen. But we want your Christianity to go more than just some soup. You know what? I want to see you have victory. You can't have victory. You can't do great things for God unless the root goes beyond the stony places. Amen. You have got, you have got, you have got to get it through your thick metal skull that unless you make the decision to do this thing, it will not happen. If you're waiting for God to wave some sort of magic wand over you to make you a strong, virulent Christian, you're going to be waiting an awful long time. It is not going to happen. The only people who make good Christians are people who make good. You've just got to follow the Lord. Amen. Amen. No matter what the world throws you away, no matter what the family throws you away, no matter what church members may throw you away, you just keep your eye on Christ. Amen. The reason why Peter began to descend into that water after he, the Lord bid him out to walk to him is what he got his eyes off of Jesus. I know that there are a lot of other pastors that will take that passage and go differently with it, but the Bible says Peter started looking at the waves. And start looking at the and saw the effects of the wind on the water. And the Bible says he began to sink. Why? He took his eyes off of who he was supposed to be looking at. Amen. He heard his voice. Come thou, Peter. Right. He heard, he began to walk, and he was getting victory until he took his eyes off of who he was supposed to be looking at. He that hath ears, let him hear. What kind of ears? best characterize you this morning. Let's pray.